Okay, I am going to be doing this cup here. Um, this is actually for a donation for a uh, charity, a fundraiser, and their colors are teal and gold. So I'm going to be using the Shipwreck Holographic Chunky and Holographic Fine because it is a traditional teal. To me, this is like the teal that you have always seen. This is perfect. And the holographicness of this, it just adds such a beautiful shine. And when we do this, we will do the chunky first, and then we will do the, um, we will fill in with this. And I'll show you how important that is to have these two that are matching when you're doing something like that. It just, it's so perfect for when you're doing this type of cup when you want to use a chunky because those chunkies a lot of time they don't have enough of the thin of the fine glitter in them to fill in or you get um you know little pieces that just don't get filled in you know it just for whatever reason because it's chunky and it, it just is not fine enough i know that i'm talking <laughs> contradicting myself but anyways this um and that's why i also paint the cup, the colors that I'm going to be using. So this is why, because I really wanted to, the colors in the, the brand are, it's kind of like a yellowy mustardy kind of color, golden kind of mustardy yellow. So I put this and then I'm going to use this on top of that. And I think it'll, you know, it, I think it'll read well for the color that it's supposed to be. Um, but I wanted it to be glittery. I wanted it to be fun and I, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm using, that's why I'm using the 10 karat gold because it just has such a gorgeous gold color to it and the holographic. It's just, I can't express how much I love this color. So, um, the chunky fill in with this. Um, it will be, I'm going to show you exactly that technique and how that really, really helps with um, giving you a complete coverage. Okay, I'm going to show you how I do my epoxy. This is just, this is the way it makes sense to me. This is the way I've done it to ensure that I get equal parts of each a and B and that way they are mixing right and getting me the the most um, solid cure that you can get so I have this box that I bought some soaps from Costco and it when I sit down at my table here I put my cups up on top of it like this and then I fill my cups up and I sit at eye level, so my eyes are down here, so I can see, I can kind of bend down just a little bit, and I can see that they're evenly matched, or evenly um, filled up, I guess I could say. So, I'm going to fill this up, and I'm going to show you how I get exactly the amount that I need here, and also... I'm going to show you this, which is these jars I got at the Dollar Tree. And I just keep like several of these up on top of my cabinet, uh, up on top of my little workspace that I have right here. Um, and when I, when I just see that they're just kind of, it's, you know, sometimes they'll crack right here from squeezing or they get a bunch of junk up there and stuff like that I'll just switch them out or if they start wearing off so much that you can't read it but I put a and B all the way around right so um, then because I know I'm gonna rub it off as I'm picking them up and picking them up and picking them up um, I also cut the top because the top comes up a lot more skinny and so I actually chopped it off because if you do not, you will have a hard, hard time squeezing these out of here. Um, these little medicine cups I got off of Amazon. I will put the link of the ones that I use here. Um, and then I will show you my epoxy spinner. That is a game changer. Honestly, I wouldn't do this 
I wouldn't, I would not mix epoxy on my own. The only way I do it is mixing it in my uh, mixer. It's the best. It's time saving. You can do other things while it's mixing. You get a much better mix. You get no bubble. Oh, well, I mean, you get bubbles, but they're like nowhere near as many bubbles as you do when you're just like stirring and stirring and stirring. So I'm going to show you that process and we'll go from there. Okay, so I have filled this up, both of them, and I have let them sit. I actually don't fill the B up, this one here. I don't fill it up as until I let this one sit. I let the A sit, and then I let the B sit, and then I wait and see where we're at as far as the line. And you see right there? We are as close to equal as we're going to get. Okay, and I pour the B in first. This is just a basic cup that I got at um, H-E-B, Walmart, wherever. Um, I try not to get the ones with the lines, but, you know, sometimes you just got to get what you want to, you just got to get up. Uh, you don't want it to have too many things down here. These lines not doesn't don't really matter as much. Down here, you don't want it to have a bunch of like ridges and stuff. So that's what you try not to do. But I'm gonna pour the um, B first, right? Because it's thinner and it will mix a little bit better. So I've seen, or so I've heard, kind of, I think, I feel the same way, but, and these little spatulas, I think I still have the link for them. I got them a while back, so I'll try to uh, find them, but I love these little things. They're silicone, so if I do leave anything on there, I try to clean everything up when I'm done. I clean everything with a baby wipe, and then I wipe it in alcohol to get fuzzies off or anything else just to kind of keep it super clean okay so there's that cup and then I'm gonna pour the A in and scrape as much as I can off I have noticed that me personally with this alumina alumilite clear clear cast epoxy that if you use a wooden popsicle stick or even a metal stir stick you get a ton of bubbles or i get a ton of bubbles if i use this thing I don't get as many bubbles in the beginning, but then I stick it on my epoxy spinner and it works. It, there's just so few bubbles when you get done that it's absolutely worth it. And you'll see. So I'm going to scrape down the side here like that. And then I am going to just fold it. Like if you were making some kind of um, whipped cream and you wanted to fold in some kind of chocolate or flavor as they say in the baking world you fold it in I'm just kind of scraping the sides and just digging down at the bottom as much as I can and I'm just folding it right this is my just to get it going get it stirred I'm gonna push down the side get as much as I can off Okay, then I'm going to put this on that, okay, and then let's move to the epoxy spinner. 
So this is your weight that goes in there. I drop that in there like that. Turn it on. And I will let this spin probably 15 minutes. Um, it will start to go clear and then I will pull it out and I will check it and see if there's any of that cloudiness that the bee causes. I'll, and then I'll spin it around myself a little bit and I'll put it back on there and I will wait. And then um, it will get nice and kind of thick and warm and you're good to go. So I've been letting this spin for, it's probably been about 10 minutes and I don't know that I can show it, but there's still some like milkiness in there from the B side. So I just took my thing and just stir it up a little bit and then I'm going to put it back on my spinner. Okay. I've let it spin for a good 15 minutes and you can see it is super clear there are very 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 few bubbles in there um, I just wipe this off on the side and then put it on my little thing here and then this is ready I'm going to glitter I'm going to epoxy my cups um, you know, my, I'm going to heat up the cups and then put the, put a little bit of epoxy on there and then let them sit to, um, so that I can glitter them. And then this is going to go onto two cups that I have on my spinners right now. So this is obviously nowhere near the amount of epoxy that you need to epoxy a cup for glittering. Um, you just need like a very 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 minuscule amount and when you heat it up it even goes on even smoother so um that's that's that that is the clear epoxy with my spinner and i was able to do other things i was able to download pictures work on some um names and things like that for the cups that i'm working on so um that's a big it's a big time saver okay, i'm gonna prep my glitters here um, the fine, I'm obviously going to do the smaller, the chunky, I'm going to do the bigger. Get those set up. I'm going to heat my, uh, cup, I'm gonna heat it up with my heat gun and, um, go from there. Okay. I got these gloves at, um, the Dollar Tree. They're way too thick for you to do epoxy on your cups like as far as the um, you know the coats of epoxy. With this kind of glove it, because it's too thick it will be really lumpy your um, your epoxy when you're putting it on as it's spinning and that kind of thing. It's gonna get super 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 like wavy so when you are doing your epoxy on your cups especially the final coat you want it to be a nice tight fitting glove you want to get the best gloves that you can find that that have a size on them that are um you know large medium small whatever your size of your hand is you need to get that's it just needs to be really tight. This kind of stuff, <clears throat> I just save for when I do epoxy. See, they're just too, I mean, when I'm epoxying for the glitter. Because, I mean, you need it to be straight, but you're not putting enough on there for it to get all, like, wavy and um, all that. So, you just need to be able to cover it. And really get it on there and so because I heated the cup up I'm getting a nice you know smooth so I'm gonna <clears throat> I just kind of twirl it a little bit in my hand make sure that 
I got all the little places. There's no glaring. So, and you know, the paint kind of did this. Because I'm using chunky, I'm not really worried about it. If I was using a fine glitter and it was going to be, uh, like I needed it to be really smooth, then I would have repainted this and worried about that. But because it's a chunky, it's really, you're not going to be able to see it. So that's that. Okay, evidently because I wanted to be cool, I spilt uh, my shipwreck all over the place. And so I just kind of... <laughs> Anyways, so um, we're going to start from the top, which I don't normally do, but I've already got it down here because I spilt it. So we're I focus on the top at first, right? So I get the top really good. And then I go around the middle. I mean, and I'm just letting it fall. I'm not, you know, like trying to. Now here's where I will get a little more cautious because I don't want a bunch of this going in here, right? So I'm going to kind of take my time. And tilt the cup. I'm tilting it ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. Just trying to get to that edge of the teal. And it's going into the gold, but that's okay. I am keeping it. Okay. Now, I'm going to clean this up. Okay, one word of advice. I've got that cup of epoxy that I mixed for my cups that are over here on my spinners. And um, it's not as warm as I would like it right now, but I'm keeping an eye on it every time I glitter this because this will sit. These will be fine. You you can work on these for a little while. So I'm just making sure I'm checking that epoxy to make sure that it's not um, getting too hot. And then it's just too thick to pour on there. So I'm going to do the bottom here. Just pour it on real thick. to Get the bottom and the edge. Be careful. Don't tilt your cup too much or that glitter can spill into here. Especially if you have not glittered this part yet. So I've already established my line here, so I'm not too worried about, I'm just kind of tilting it and then I'm tilting it up into here. Until I go all the way around and that's pretty much that. Now, that's all I'm going to do for the chunky. Now go in with the this. And this is how you're really going to kind of blend these two colors together. And you're going to fill in all those little spots that you don't see yet because everything's kind of bright and it's wet and everything. But once it dries and you start working with it, you're going to see that you have little spots where you're like, man, I wish I would have put some more glitter on there. So that's why it's crucial to use these fine glitters with it okay now let's go over the fine and we are going to douse this whole thing in fine here I'm letting a little bit of it fall into the gold just as a going all the way around So I'm pretty sure I got all the way around. Get the top real good. And that's that. Now you can see automatically how it just really fills in. It's really, to me, crucial. And I 
once again, I love that they have the two matching colors. So you don't have to guess, you don't have to try to figure out which one matches, which one's this side, that side, this. It's just, it's so easy to have boom, shipwreck, chunky, boom, shipwreck, fine, and you're done. Then you've got your colors you need. So let's do the um, tin carat and we'll go from there. Okay, and here is the tin carat fine. And I'm just bringing this all the way up into the teal up here. You're not gonna get much going in there, but it will help with the blending. And that's all we're looking for, because we've already pretty much saturated the teal area, but any little place that we can get a little bit of gold is all we're looking for, just like we did with the teal. Bringing it down into the gold so we can get a good ombre and I'm going to do the bottom really good. I cover my bottoms with my logo so I don't worry too much about the bottom but you see how that and we have good 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 coverage. You know, we have a nice blend, I think, right here. Bringing this into here and bringing that down there. And look at the sparkle! It's so beautiful! Okay, what we're going to do is let this sit, right? We're going to clean this up, and then I am going to roll this in the parchment paper, and I will show you how to flatten those. It is crucial to flatting this down so that you can do as less coats of epoxy as possible because you don't want to use that much it just gets so thick and you just don't want to use that much because epoxy costs a lot and so I will show you how that works next okay so I'm gonna show you how I roll this so I very gently I don't try to rub by any means and just roll this as I'm pressing. You're going to have some that's going to fall off. I'm going to do that to flatten the bottom and then just run my hands over this and anything I see that's kind of popping up I just pat it rub my finger here Just pat those down. This is going to be crucial to how many coats of epoxy you put on here. Because the more glitter that's sticking up, the more epoxy you have to put on there to cover it. it epoxy likes to repel glitter. So that's why you got to seal it. I do mine with polycrylic. I'm going to show that. So I just go through and try to push down as much of the glitter as is sticking up. So that's that. See how flat it is? much better. So I just, and that's that. Okay, I have the <clears throat> polycrylic here. This is a polycrylic clear glass, clear gloss, my bad. And it is a 32 fluid ounce, one quart can. Now, 
<clears throat> this can is only available at Lowe's, Walmart, and Ace Hardware are the only places that I have found it. So, um, <clears throat> and I found it on Amazon, but it was like a waiting list to find it. So, but this is what I use. I mean, I, you can find it. It's just like, it's not available at Home Depot. I don't know what Minwax and hap what happened between Minwax and, uh, Home Depot, but they don't have it. So, <clears throat> but this is the best stuff. Obviously, I have used almost all of it. Well, actually, funny story is you do not want to shake this, by the way. This is a, just stir it up, stir it up. Do not shake the can, okay? Just stir it around and get it going. Um, <clears throat> this can I actually bought at Ace Hardware and it oh sorry I was looking for my <laughs> my brush it fell out of my the back of my SUV I know those of you that have an SUV the, the thing comes up when you pop it open and I guess it had rolled or whatever and it rolled right out the driveway right onto the driveway of my mom's house Ugh. so like um literally half of it went down the driveway luckily it was raining so it just like and it's water based so it just kind of went down the drain but <clears throat> you notice how i'm just patting i just pat it pat it down And I do put it on my turner. That way I have control. I can, <clears throat> I can turn it as I go. And I don't put that much because you don't want it to be cloudy. Okay. But I just pat it down. I mean, I'm kind of rubbing it, but I'm not like stroking it. You know what I mean? So I'm just kind of patting and rubbing it down. And it will look cloudy. It will look like, what did I just do? But I promise this is the best thing. This is the best way to do it. <clears throat> and I would say do one coat, unless it's just like you just really feel like you need to do two coats. <clears throat> but I would definitely just do one coat. I have used the spray before but I do not like the spray I use the spray <clears throat> for like my fall cup with my um, wood grain tree I use it for that because I don't want to do this and then I'm going into the tree but that's the only time that I use the spray it just doesn't work as well as doing it this way. Okay. I have um, some teal in this. <clears throat> so I'm going to wash this out. Now, it doesn't matter. This is a water-based deal. So just wash it out, dry it with a towel, go right back to work. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to set this to spin while we do that. And then I'll be back. Okay. I'm going to turn this off. So this, uh, these brushes I've talked about several times on my um, videos, but I will definitely put the link down in there. It comes in a two pack. This one is like my rough, 
<clears throat> my rough one and then I have one that I keep that's in really good shape that for my painting so um, if I do any kind of painting so anyways so I've got all the um, teal glitter out for the butt for the most part I mean we we did blend this down so I mean if some pieces go down into it it's not that big of a deal you just have to gauge like if it's a big chunk and you're just and you're like no I don't like that big chunk right there then just peel it off just peel it off no harm no foul so we're doing the same thing we're turning and I'm just patting and and kind of slightly brushing it down You don't want to do too much. I mean, if your brush is already kind of saturated, maybe you can just go another, another round. Pat it off. It's hard to tell sometimes. Sometimes I'll look at the, the writing up here on the, uh, you know, the PVC pipe to keep my where I started from because so, most of the time you can tell because like I don't know if you can tell right there but this is wet and this is dry you know so you can kind of tell sorry I do not have a light that's in front of me because I'm doing this at night time so you normally my window is over there and so I, you, I would get sunlight going in but I'm doing this when I have the opportunities which is while my kid is watching his tablet his pilat time i don't know why he started calling it a pilat but it's pilat but he gets one hour at night he gets one hour before nap time sometimes depends on what we're doing or where we're you know he might fall asleep in the car but at night time he gets one hour and he just loves it it's it makes it so special i mean he watches tv during the day we throw on some cartoons or whatever but but the like the youtube stuff yeah, he doesn't, he gets that. And ironically, you know, here I am on YouTube. But, you know, I try to focus my YouTube stuff on educating myself. You know, educating you guys. This is how I was able to do this business or start this business. Was because of all the gracious people that went on YouTube and showed me how to do cups. And... So, I mean, I'm no expert by no means, but I have watched a ton of videos. So, I'm hoping that you learn something from a lot of mistakes that I have made. I'm just patting the bottom here. I'm just kind of going around to see if there's any spots that I can see that I missed. Ooh, that's too much gold in there. If there's anything glaring out at me. So, but that's that that's what I do this will dry I it says it can dry in like two hours but honestly I just started to spin and I and I like I like right now like I said I'm doing this at night this I do at night so when I wake up in the morning I take my son to school it's dry it's cure it's everything is ready to go so I just put a coat of epoxy a coat of epoxy sand all my little places sand here put decals put the logo put mod podge like i talked about in my um, black and gold leopard put mod podge put final coat and you're done so that's that that's that that for this video i'm not gonna go over what i do to this um video because I wanted this to be more of a tip, you know, tips and tricks for doing the epoxy, glittering, doing the, um, I'm trying to keep this focused on the cup, <laughs> uh, doing the epoxy and doing the polycrylic, just kind of going through that whole step with you guys. So I'm hoping this is a good video for you. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you learned something, take away something from it. Leave any kind of comments or questions below and I will be more than happy to answer you.